Okay, let's talk about this section over here. Let's start off with mode one. Mode one, now again, we have one envelope directed towards the amp. So uh, there has to be concessions made because it's a paraphonic sort of uh, amplitude situation. So here are the two modes. The first mode is this. I am emphasizing uh, an aspect of this. Basically, it re-triggers the envelope every time you um, create a note event. So It's, uh, oops. and uh, if you're holding notes, the notes basically pl play without articulation as long as the amp is open. So that's what you're hearing there. But uh, it starts not at zero, it doesn't have a return to zero, it will start. Uh, when you with each new note event, it will start from where the amp currently is as opposed to going all the way to zero, which you can kind of force it to do if you play shortly enough. But uh, is that shortly enough? Does that make sense? Anyway, um, yeah, so it's not an ugly, horrific return to zero. So that's not too bad. And then, you know, certainly you can have a long attack on. A long release time or a long attack time with a no release time. Or vice versa. Now the second uh, doesn't, whereas the first will actually interrupt the tail, the release of the sound, it'll interrupt it and, and start the envelope over again. This setting will not. So it ends up sounding kind of like a little bit, depending on how long your release is, uh, holding down the sustain pedal on a piano. And it also does the attack. Now, the thing I don't understand about this is that it does seem to almost act in a articulated way in that the release times are seem to be independent. So like it will you'll hear the last note I play fade out last. Actually, that's not sure. It was doing it early. It's actually the middle note that's that's fading out last, but uh, it's still weird that they're not all fading out together. That's something like they faded out together. That time was the last note, but maybe it's the last lowest note. I don't know, but uh, basically it allows independent, uh, it allows all of the sounds to continue even though you're playing new notes. And so those are the two different modes that you have to work with. Uh, we also have a section you've probably seen me using uh, that is this stereo output mixer. I'm not sure that chorus is in stereo. If it is, it's very subtly in stereo. But uh, this mixer is definitely in stereo. So like right now, we're uh, playing the string sound and there is a panning 
slider here. So you can place the strings in a stereo mix where you want them to be. Control the volume, of course. And uh, you can switch the output off. So like you can have it set to a specific volume and then pop it in when you need it to. So that's really helpful. Something that does need to be pointed out here. We'll do, we'll do all of them. I'll turn, uh, oh, I can just turn it off. Let's get the organ going. I have not been able to get the organ panning to work. So I wonder if maybe this fader might be dead. It's supposed to pan, uh, but otherwise it works in the same way. You control the volume and whether it's playing. And the same goes for the brass section. Now keep in mind, this is really important. This is uh, kind of the most important aspect. We have like this crossfading section here for the organ. So if you want the organ to come out of itself and go through the chorus, what you need to do is first of all, turn down the organ, unless you'd like to mix in the unaffected organ with your affected organ. <laughs> Wow. That, okay. Uh, anyway, so turn down the organ, switch this over to organ, and now you're going to hear the organ and not the strings coming out of the chorus through the strings level. <laughs> wow. Did I screw that up? Okay. Um, yeah, we're going to have to turn the switch on, aren't we? Now you can hear the organ getting the chorus effect. Of course, if you switch it over here, you'll hear the strings and not the organ. So there's several different places to do mixing, but it gets kind of confusing because like to hear the this is colored to match the strings, but to hear the organ, which is green through the chorus, you'd turn the green down and turn the strings up, but switch it over to green here. There's some, uh, <laughs> the spectrum is a little bit weird on here, but, and the opposite is, well, the other part is true for the other section. If you want to hear the organ through the low pass filter, you have to slide it over to organ right here turn up the volume of the brass section. And then of course you can you know, crossfade everything and pan everything and just have yourself a very exciting time. Well, we don't hear anything. We have the, oh, I guess. Oh, So uh, this is kind of the, the, the fun of it. You can place the different instruments, the different instruments, you can place the different instruments in the stereo field. Uh, you can mix and match the effects with certain instruments. The organ gets either the chorus or the filter or neither. 
Brass just gets the filter, strings only gets the chorus. So that is the Moog Opus 3 and what you can expect from it. Thank you.